Hi, Moral Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an Indian comedy drama film called Hindi Medium. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with Meeta, a beautiful young girl that walks into the tailor's store with her mother to order a nice dress she wants to have tailor made for herself. The tailor and her mother find the dress somewhat revealing for their taste. Fortunately, Raj, the tailor's son, is present and tells her he will make her the dress the way she wants it. His father doesn't know much about dresses. Let's not forget to mention that Raj is very attracted to her. He follows her everywhere and every day. It's more like being a guardian angel thing, not being a stalker thing. Years go by, Cho Tu, Raj's employee, tries to sell some merchandise to the ladies on the streets, attempting to lure them into his shop. He manages to grab the attention of two women, but he's not actually able to give them what they want. Later, Raj comes in and works his magic on the ladies. Raj can't complete the sale because someone calls them and he has to go immediately. Raj meets his wife, Mita, on a playground where she's being overprotective with her daughter, Pia. They left their daughter with her nanny and they leave together with the car. They take a tour around some nice private schools in order to decide which one they want to choose for their daughter. Mita places lots of importance on choosing the right school, but that's not the case with Raj. Mita comes to the conclusion about which the best school is, but there is a problem. That particular school only accepts students who live nearby in a three kilometer radius around the school. Mita tells Raj that they need to get a house near that area of the city, but Raj doesn't agree. However, women always find a way, and she convinces him to move to a house closer to the Delhi Grammar School. Mita throws a party so they can meet their new high society neighbors, but things don't go as planned. People will judge Raj's dancing skills as peculiar, and Mita will feel a bit ashamed of him. The party is also crushed by Kabir and his wife, Artie, along with their son, Ayan. Judging by the looks on their face, Kabir is probably an ex-lover of Mita's. The next day, the other kids won't play with Pia on the playground because she doesn't speak English. Getting into Delhi grammar appears to be more difficult than Mita and Raj thought. Raj has to wait in a line consisted of 250 people just to take the application papers. Thankfully, Mita bumps upon Kabir who hints her to the school counselor. She will be able to help them. She agrees to help them, but before Pia is admitted by the school, the parents have to pass some tests themselves. She gives them some papers to fill out, but the parents mess it up because they fail to effectively describe their own daughter's character traits. The counselor hints them to a writer and the writer does the job for them. He describes Pia in words that Raj and Mita find hard to understand. Then they have to go through a series of interviews with the members of the school commission. They do well because the counselor has instructed them on what they should say. No matter what efforts they do, Pia is not accepted by the school due to her parents' low education level. That's the school's final decision. Raj tries to counterbalance the situation but realizes that bribing won't have an effect on the school's female principal, Loda. Furthermore, his supposedly powerful friends can't really help him with anything. To make matters worse, Chotu visits Raj and Mita and tells him that his daughter got admitted into Prakriti, which is another department of the private school system. Mita falls deeper into depression. Raj goes back to the counselor the next day and asks her how that happened. His employee's daughter got admitted into private school, but Pia didn't. The counselor explains that Chotu's daughter got admitted via another process, a lottery. But that lottery can only include the names of poor children. The counselor says that such a lottery exists in Delhi Grammar as well. She also suggests that Raj can apply through the same form and put Pia's name into the lottery if he can prove that they are a poor family, but to do so, Raj has to get some fake papers about his fortune. Raj can't get those papers from the governmental services, but a random tea seller tells Raj that he can get the job done. He claims he has the connections to smuggle his daughter's name into the right people's hands and they can get her into the lottery. Raj runs home to tell Mita the good news and give her some hope. Their mood gets run when they see the school's principal on television. A reporter says that there are rumors of rich people pretending to be poor just to get their children admitted into the lottery and therefore the school. The principal says that there is no such thing happening. If anybody tries to do something like that, they will most probably end up in jail. 
She mentions that there will be teachers visiting the parents of the poor children in their homes to inspect with their own eyes if each family is poor for real or just pretending to be poor. Raj meets with his connection and expresses his worries about the principal's statements, but the man assures him that nothing bad is going to happen. He's been doing this process flawlessly for the last seven years. Raj and Mita lie to everyone and tell them they are going to Europe for vacations, but in reality, they dress like poor people and rent a house in a poor neighborhood. So if Pia's application is reviewed and someone wants to visit their house, they will look like they are extremely poor. Lodo calls a male teacher in her office, the one who informed the press about the supposedly fake applications of the rich people. Since he has suspicions, the principal puts him in charge of the applications. He will be the one to visit the applicants and determine if they are really poor or faking it. The rented house is really small and drives Raj and Mita to whine to each other. They have some special guests in the house as well, mice. The next morning, Mita uploads some pictures of them in front of the Eiffel Tower. Of course, they fake those pictures with the assistance of a professional photographer who placed them in front of a green screen. In the meantime, Raj is stuck in the toilet because there's no water to clean himself. Luckily, there is a good neighbor willing to offer them two buckets of water. Let's call this neighbor Shy for short. They become friends and invite him and his family in the house. Seems like these neighbors have also applied to Delhi Grammar for their own son's admission. While their water savior teaches them the art of killing mosquitoes, someone bangs on their door. They open up and see the teacher who's responsible for the application's control. A lot of neighbors gather around while the teacher inspects the house. He checks Raj's hands and they are soft. He compares them to the hands of another man and they are not even close. The teacher navigates around the house and sees Pia in a room eating pizza. That immediately clicks to him. He also sees some cold bottles of water. He asks them what's going on there. Are they faking it? Raj and Mita fall short for words, but Shai saves them again. He says that these people don't yet know how to live below their means because they recently got poor. They were rich, but recently got poor. He will teach them how to live like the poor people do. Mita and Raj pick up on the story. The teacher seems convinced and goes away. Mita asks him about his decision, but the teacher hasn't decided yet. The next day, Raj and Mita have to deal with the ugly face of poverty. Mita has to fight with other women to fill her bucket with water. Tulsi, Shai's wife, will have to teach her to fight for herself, but also stays silent when she needs to. At the same time, Shai takes Raj to work with him in a snack production and packaging factory so he can earn some money. But Raj can't do the job and blocks the machines. Plus, he needs too many breaks and the supervisor doesn't like that. They don't pay Raj anything because his performance was the worst ever. Raj and Mita meet in bed at night after a destructive day. Shai has given Raj half of his wage and Tulsi has given Mita half her food supplies. Those people know how it feels like to go to bed with an empty stomach. Time passes by and people find themselves caught up in the same routine. The teacher returns back to Raj, Mita, Shai and Tulsi and announces that their children have been admitted to Delhi Grammar's lottery. All of them get excited until the teacher says that there's still some cost. They still have to pay a certain amount of money for their children's activities in school. The teacher says they need to give them a final answer, right there, right now. Shai and Tulsi panic, but Raj and Mita are calmer because they have that amount of money available. The teacher demands an answer and Raj says they will send their children to Delhi Grammar. He will find a solution regarding the money. That night, Raj pays a visit to the ATM to take some money using his card. Shai catches him in the act and Raj lies to him. He tells him he is stealing money out of the ATM. Shai doesn't let him do it and takes him away. When they reach the road, Shai is hit by a car. Raj wants to call the police, but Shai and the driver work out on their own solution. The driver gives Shai some money in exchange for his silence. Raj takes Shai to the hospital and Shai confesses that he intentionally jumped in front of the car to get hit and negotiate some unofficial money arrangements. Furthermore, Shai gives the money to Raj for his daughter. It's time for the lottery to take place in Delhi Grammar, so 10 kids can be selected to start studying in the school. Pia is lucky enough, but Shai's son, not that much. Shai and Tulsi are sad, but they still want to celebrate Pia's admission. Raj and Mita start feeling guilty deep inside. Raj and Mita leave the poor neighborhood and return to their house near Delhi Grammar. They can't forgive themselves for what happened with Shai's family.
Roger remembers that Shy jumped in front of a car for his family. They decided to support a public school by donating a generous amount of money, but not just any school, the public school that Shy's son attends. Shy visits the school to thank the principal for what he's done. The principal reveals that he didn't do anything. If it wasn't for the donors, no improvement would have been possible to the facility. Shy asks for the donor's address to visit and thank them. Shy visits Raj, but he's so good-hearted that he doesn't make the connection at first. But eventually he does. It's unavoidable. Shy says he's going to do what's fair and right for his son. He visits his school to speak with the principal, Loda. But Pia sees him from a distance and greets him, calling him uncle. Shy is touched and he can't do what he came to do. He leaves. But now Raj can't stand himself. He sees Principal Loda in her office and tells her the truth. Unfortunately, Loda is not willing to do anything about this situation. What's happened has happened. She just tells him to go to the school theater and enjoy the show with the rest of the parents. Raj now pays a visit to the teacher who inspected and approved their application. A great show is going on in the theater. The show is not just consisted by children who study in Delhi grammar. Children from public schools are artfully mingled into their performance to send their own message and demonstrate their special talents. After the show, Raj invites himself on the podium and gives a heartbreaking speech about what really matters in life as opposed to what is expected to be important by the society. He talks about unethical interest as opposed to what real caring seems like. Everyone should have a right to proper education. Raj and Mita are finally ready to send their daughter to public school. Subscribe to see more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching.